Hello everyone, today we're going to look into obsessive compulsive disorder. We're basically going to try to understand the clinical features of this particular disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder commonly called as OCD or known as OCD was initially categorized under anxiety and related disorders in the DSM-4 TR which is the pre previous manual of the Di diagnostic statistical manual, the previous versions. However, in the current DSM-5 version, we are having a separate category for OCD and related disorders. So, this particular category has varied other disorders like uh, body dysmorphic disorder, hoarding disorder, excoriation disorder, hair pulling disorder. So, there are varied other disorders that are the subcategories of OCD. I mean, uh, a few other variants of OCD like symptoms are also also placed together under OCD okay so now we are gonna try to understand what really obsessive compulsive disorder really means obsessive compulsive disorder has basically two components to it as the name implies which is obsessive thoughts plus compulsive behavior so basically these two components kind of make up the whole disorder altogether okay so now let's look at what are these obsessions okay obsessions are basically thoughts that are very very persistent that are very very recurring that can be very intrusive which is it you you can't really stop it all by yourself all of a sudden and it can come at any time at any point of the day so it becomes very intrusive to the individual who is having such thoughts okay and basically it is very uncontrollable okay so the individual who is actually experiencing such thoughts okay has like a lot of host of ruminations of the you know same thought over and over and over again okay and the person finds it really really hard to be able to cope with it so that is basically obsessions now what is compulsions compulsions are repetitive acts so these acts can be overt or covert okay so overt acts are basically repetitive behaviors that can be observed and covert acts are mental behaviors okay or mental processes that cannot really be observed but however they kind of engage in such mental activity against such obsessions so basically compulsive behaviors are performed in response to the obsessions with the idea that such obsessions will be reduced okay i repeat compulsive behaviors are basically performed in response to to the obsessions with an idea that or the belief that these obsessions will actually reduce okay so the 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 goal of compulsive behavior is either to reduce the obsessions or to prevent any kind of danger that's actually impending to them that is their belief that there is a danger or a threat and they kind of try to reduce it by engaging in such compulsive behavior obviously when a person is having such you know obsessional thoughts and such and has to engage in certain compulsive behaviors we can recognize that their quality of life would be very very poor and it's also understand you know very understandable that when we are looking at insight insight is your idea about the illness or your you know the understanding that the client has about his or her illness so this state may or may not be present so in some cases they may you know feel that they are behaving in a very uh, you know abnormal way and they might themselves seek help or in other cases they might feel this is just normal i'm just checking or i'm just cleaning or i'm just doing things rightly okay and and this is not something that needs any uh, you know psychiatrist or a psychologist opinion so basically insight may or may not be present in the individual okay so when we are looking at a diagnostic point of view you can diagnose a person with you know OCD only if the person has a minimum of say an 
are of having such symptoms during the day and in severe cases you can notice that most of your waking hours they will have such obsessional thoughts and such compulsive behaviors so that's basically when we are looking at the diagnosis so next let's look at what are the different kinds of obsessive thoughts that a person can hold in majority research findings these were the thoughts that actually came up okay so these thoughts include a uh, fear of contamination fear of harming oneself or others pathological doubt need for symmetry sexual obsessions obsessions concerning aggression or religion so basically if you're i'll explain all of them in a word or two so that you're able to uh, get a hang of it so when you're looking at fear of contamination basically the person might not like you know do engaging in any behavior that they feel is you know contaminating them okay for example it can even be shaking hands with another person it can even be touching knobs which 10 different people have touched or it can be uh, you know going to a public toilet and you know use, touching that flush okay so they might have thoughts that you know okay uh, you know I, I you know i might just get contaminated if i touch any of these spaces okay so they might just have fears that you know uh, everything has to be clean and you know if not you know something's gonna happen to me or some uh, or a great harm is gonna come upon me so something like that okay so fear of harming oneself or others is when they have obsessional thoughts that you know they you know there is a thought which constantly tells about how you know they are a threat to them or they are a threat to someone else or that someone else is gonna harm them things like that okay so fear of harming oneself or how you know they feel that they are gonna be harming another person okay so so that is uh, obsessive thoughts about uh, harm harm next pathological doubt is constantly there is doubt has this person reached home is this person safe is everything all right with this person okay so you know the, the constant obsessive thoughts about uh, you know of, of doubting situations doubting events okay so that's pathological doubt so need for symmetry is they like order okay wherein they want things to be in a certain order if the order is kind of not done in the same way they they wouldn't like it and they would like to place it again in the same order for example if suppose they have uh, they they place the you know the cd rack over over a oh you know over a television in their house they will want the cd rack to constantly be placed that there if someone kind of changes the or relocates the position they wouldn't like it okay so they like a certain order or a certain positioning in their house or in their you know in their space and they do not like anyone else reorganizing it okay sexual obsessions talks about intrusive uh, obsessional thoughts about sexuality which can also be very very interesting interfering for the person and obsessions concerning anger and religion is okay i i better do this or else god is gonna punish me or you know i bet you know this person has been has been such a harm to me okay so all of such thoughts which keep coming into the mind of a person over and over and over again now let's look at compulsive rituals compulsive rituals are cleaning checking repeating arranging counting okay primary obsessional slowness i don't think any of the above require any explanation but i would like to explain primary obsessional slowness so when we are looking at primary obsessional slowness it talks about how people do things extra slowly okay for example if it is cleaning or if it is doing a certain activity they might do it very very extremely slowly so that is primary obsession slowness apart from that we are looking at cleaning checking repeating all of this basically are done in response to the obsessional thoughts so for example fear of contamination so they keep cleaning 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 and cleaning over, over and over and over again their hands for example okay so they clean to the point of even you know ripping apart their skin okay or causing you know uh, skin tears or bleeding and all of that okay so it can even go to that extent so that is that's how compulsive their behaviors 
are okay so next we're gonna look at prevalence age of onset and gender differences okay it uh, it is prevalent equally in uh, men and women okay and it tends to be prevalent more among separated individuals and unemployed individuals so we can talk about this in terms of how uh, you know obsessive compulsive disorder causes a lot of burden to relationships because of which you know relationships get uh, impaired and also because of their obsess uh, you know obsessive thoughts and compulsive ritualistic behaviors it can be a lot of harm for a person in a working community so because of which we can actually notice that many of them get unemployed okay so can you see how uh, OCD is actually a very very uh, intrusive disorder okay so when we are looking onset we can't say it has a clear-cut onset it can typically occur at any uh, you know uh, it can occur at any uh, age even at childhood but in most cases it kind of has an onset in late adolescence or early adulthood okay but we can't be there is no hard and fast rule that it has to be having a certain onset uh, at only a particular age no that's not the way it is but you can notice that when it's a childhood or an early adolescent onset you can notice that there you know it is most more commonly in boys and it kind of uh, ends up to be ha a very very severe form okay so that is basically the childhood and early adolescent okay so there is something called as gradual onset which is in most cases a typical of OCD so gradual onset is basically uh, a, a, you know a show up of symptoms in a very very slow manner okay so uh, so that's how OCD in most cases is okay but you need to know that uh, OCD not like other disorders but OCD is a disorder which kind of waxes and wanes over time that is over time you can notice the uh, symptom intensity to kind of reduce in a person so it is not something that will definitely live with you till your death okay it can wax and wane over time but however there are a lot of individual differences in this okay so next we're gonna look at comorbidity when we're looking at comorbidity it generally co-occurs with both uh, men and uh, women okay and uh, because of which it can co-occur with varied anxiety disorders okay so like uh, it can co-occur with specific phobia social anxiety disorder generalized anxiety disorder panic disorder okay so basically uh, this particular disorder can co-occur with many many other anxiety disorders okay it can also co-occur with major depression so close to 25 to 50 percentage of cases uh, co-occur of you know people with OCD have um, have experienced an episode of major depression but however close to 80 percent do not have a clinical diagnosis of depression but they do have depressive symptoms okay that is symptoms not intense enough for a diagnosis but they do have symptoms okay so that's basically when we are looking at the symptom point of view so i hope you all have understood you know the clinical features comorbidity and prevalence of ocd okay so if there are any doubts do let me know thank you